Lack of capital has been the biggest challenge affecting entrepreneurship growth in Africa. In Kenya, we have the Youth Enterprise Development Fund helping entrepreneurs to get funding. Are you looking for funding? Do you need money to start a business? This is Founders Connect Africa. Oh, hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Thank you so much. You're well? My time. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you. Karibu. Thank you so much. Mm. Yes. Habari ya utokako? Mzuri sana. Yeah. Yes. Karibu yes. hapa kwa vijana. Asante. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Kwenu. <laughs> uh, just give me a minute. Yes. There is a file that is being waited for here of a loan that I need to process to approve. Yes. Then uh, I'll be with you in a moment. This is a young person who has applied for 2 million Kenya shillings. And we need to have a look at it. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Now we can talk. Yes, please. Uh -huh. Ah. Good. Visitors are served uh, from here. Yes. Uh, but our loan processing is done on on fifth floor. You see, for instance, this mm -hmm. is a loan application mm -hmm. for a group application. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see this group has applied for what is the amount? Okay. This group has applied for one hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. It is the first time they are applying. Yes. Once they repay this, we'll be able to give them two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. This is Mr. Tavachi. Yes. Uh, he's our head of finance. Okay. He is he's the gentleman who ensures. Yeah. That all the, the applications coming in from credit yes. are processed okay. and they are wired into the account yeah, of the young people. He's the one who makes sure that the money is in the bank. He makes sure the money is in the bank. <laughs> right. yeah. But I can see you're youth. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Benson, thank you so much for having us and having the time to um, talk to us. Thank yes, you. yeah. All right. So, um, this is the Youth Fund, and um, we have been doing interviews with many young people, and the major question that has been is lack of funding, and where do we get funding? And um, uh, the government has brought this Youth Fund, this Women Fund. Um, generally, what has been your um, experience in terms of um, young people coming to look for money at the Youth Fund? Uh, thank you. Uh my experience is that uh, the uptake of loans has been very good. Uh, well, not as good as we would want it to be, uh, but reasonably good. Uh, however, we have also encountered regional disparities. So some regions will have very high uptake and some regions will have low uptake. The regions will uh, high uptake will tend to be those regions that are densely populated, and, 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 and uh, have, are sophisticated in terms of infrastructure, uh, in terms of amenities, in terms of uh, ability to communicate and to access information. And also because of the uh, high population density, they also tend to have more business opportunities. And it also tends to be easier to do business in, in those areas because uh, you spend less, less to reach your customers. Uh, so that has been the experience. Now, however, there are also issues of uh, information flow uh, to young people. And we have the challenge of budget, that even though we get money for lending, the money we get for operations, uh, for support services is not as much. And so therefore, we are not able to invest a lot of money in uh, creating awareness. And at the same time, uh, our footprint on the ground is a little weak. We have very few staff on the ground, and those are the people who would ordinarily rely on to be able to reach out to young people, just like uh, agricultural extension officers, visit farmers in their farms and see what they are doing. Uh, if we had more officers, 
they'll be walking around churches, mosques, uh, villages to talk to young people and basically to hear what they need and to be able to provide a service for them. However, we uh, are trying to uh, mitigate this by trying to exploit the opportunities available within social media so that those young people that have access to a smartphone uh, can be able to access this information and can share the same information uh, with, the young people, with the other young people in their neighborhood. We are also trying to partner with other people like uh, religious organizations, churches, mosques, uh, provincial administration, uh, so to speak. And we hope that uh, by leveraging on them, we shall be able to reach more and more young people with information uh, so that they can be able to benefit from uh, our programs. All right. How much have you distributed so far? Uh, since inception, the fund has disbursed uh, uh, 13.5 billion uh, Kenya shillings, uh, benefiting about uh, 1.4 million uh, young people. We also have other programs besides loans. We have entrepreneurship training uh, in which we have done about uh, 600,000 young people uh, since inception. We also provide market support uh, to young people and we've, uh, we've done uh, 3,000 young people uh, since uh, inception. Yeah. Um, many young people don't understand the criteria for um, getting a loan and mostly what I've heard is that you must have collateral to um, to take a loan. Um, just take us through the process of getting a loan from. We have varied loan products. Uh, in fact, very many of them, depending on uh, the interests and the needs of, of the applicant. Uh, to begin with, we have a very easy and friendly uh, loan product, which we give to groups, groups of young people, uh, five members and above. We recommend that they be not more than 10 for ease of management of the group and they will do a group project and some of them have done very well in, in, in this and this loan product has very few requirements or oh, the group just needs to be registered uh, with social services they fill our application form uh, they should have a bank account because we put money to bank accounts we don't send it into people's uh, uh, we, we don't give people cash we send it into bank accounts uh, to ensure that if it is a group, for instance, yeah. that you know the bank has signatories, authorized signatories, that you know money is not misused by an individual, uh, and, and and so on, then um, they will fill the application form, of course, and we, then we put the money into their uh, account. They start with a hundred thousand shillings. Once they repay, we give them two hundred. They repay, we give them four hundred. We graduate them until they do one million uh, as a group, and and a lot of gr groups have taken advantage of this money and and are doing uh, good things. That money has no interest. Uh, it doesn't require you to provide security. It's a very friendly product. Wow. Then uh, we have products, uh, other products like for business expansion. Now, here we give you money either as a company or uh, as an individual. And here we are dealing with people who already have a running business. You have a running business, and because you have a running business and you want money for expansion, uh, we want to see the trajectory of your company. Where is your business going? Uh, and, and, and then, therefore, we'll ask you for your financial statement to be able to see uh, how much revenue are you generating, and therefore, how much money would we be able to uh, invest into that business uh, so that it, it, it reaches uh, the level that you desire. So at that point we may ask you to provide a financial statement because you're a, a business that has been existing. And then depending on how much money you want again, uh, there are people who will come and ask for 2 million, for 3 million Kenya shillings. Now uh, such an amount, if you lend it to an individual, uh, if, if he relocates from one area to another, it becomes very difficult to uh, to get that money back. So we may require some form of uh, collateral uh, and that uh, whatever you're providing as security, uh, probably even a logbook or a title, doesn't have to belong to you. Uh, it just needs to belong to a person who can trust you because you know to us, you are a stranger, we don't know you, you probably the first time you've come here, but there are people who have known you since you were born and therefore they can vouch for you and, and they can trust you. Then of course we have agribusiness loans, we have talent development loans, and, and all those also, uh, you know, we, uh, we appraise people on individual basis. So the requirements will depend on where you're coming from. Yes. All right. Um, 
let's talk about the repayment. Have you had issues with repayment um, of the loans that you're issuing in the recent past? Yes, we have had issues in repayments. One, because uh, in the past we lent money to very large groups. Uh, and not that be, we wanted them large, but they came large when, when they were applying. Uh, you'll find a group of 30, 40, 50 people. And, and see that such a group becomes difficult to manage, it becomes difficult even to agree on things. So the group may disintegrate, and once it disintegrates, then it becomes difficult to pay the money. However, with, with smaller groups, we have reduced the requirement for groups to five. Uh, in fact, we are happy if you are five. Uh, or just slightly more. Now with that, we have seen uh, improved repayment. Then again, uh, for the individual loans, uh, we had a challenge in the past. In, in the past, we were not asking for security. But then uh, you will come to our office and say, I need a million to do one, two, three. Uh, we give you the money and then you change your telephone line and you change where you live and we can't trace you. Uh, so yeah. it became uh, uh, mandatory for us to ask for security. And it's because of that, uh, that now we have been able to improve repayment because if you ask for a million Kenya shillings and you, uh, in that one million Kenya shillings you have secured it using something else yeah. then you didn't want to lose whatever you have used to secure yeah. so, so you will pay. Then when it comes to asset finance for instance if we buy for you a matatu uh, once it is registered with us it means if you are unable to repay it remains ours and we also require you to pay 30% so that uh, you also don't want to lose the 30% that you invested in it. Uh, so those are some of the things we are forced to do. Some of those measures may look a little bit harsh to young people, but we are caught between uh, delivering services and being able to sustain uh, ourselves. Because the government also expects that once they give us money, we should be able to revolve it, we should be able to lend, collect and lend to other people. But if you are lending and the money is uh, sinking, then we will not be sustainable. All right. Um, let's talk about this year. There has there's been a lot of um, crisis because of um, coronavirus. Um, how much right now do you have at cash um, that is available for lending? Uh, this financial year, we we plan to lend about six hundred million uh, Kenya shillings, and we always have money uh, to lend. <laughs> so what I want to guarantee young people is if you there's something that you want to do and you need money, you need a loan, just come to us and we have money for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have seen a lot of um, lenders going uh, on mobile. Um, is, is there a time that um, Youth Fund is going to go mobile? Yes, yes. We are actually developing a mobile application. Uh, to begin with, we have laid out very good infrastructure for an ERP system, Enterprise Resource uh, Planning uh, System, uh, that is going to integrate uh, our head office uh, with our field offices. Uh, and then what we intend to, so that then uh, our officers can be able to approve loans uh, from where they are and communicate directly to head office without necessarily having to send big envelopes, uh, you know, with, uh, with application forms. And then in the next phase, uh, what we want to do is that we are developing a mobile uh, application, which we are calling a Y-App, Y-App for uh, youth application. And we will integrate that with our system so that young people will now be able to apply for loans uh, from, from their devices, from their mobile phones, uh, from their personal computers, or even from a cyber cafe. Uh, so that if you come from an area that does not have an officer on the ground, you are quickly able to go online, fill in an application form, upload copies of your documents, ID, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and, and then it is taken up by the nearest officer uh, online uh, who uh, checks if they need to verify any documentation, they'll visit you. And then uh, if they're satisfied, uh, you know, they escalate it to head office. It is picked uh, by the next immediate person who confirms that this is a genuine loan. And, and, and then we process the money and uh, uh, deposit in the, in the uh, loan, in the account uh, of the applicant. Uh, there's another thing that is bothering my mind. So you talked about 600 million. Is this what uh, the money that you have every year to give to um, young people? Um, this, year, this year we have less money. We are getting less money from the National Treasury. 
uh, there's a, a little of the money that we, we revolve, we get from the money that we are revolving. Mm -hmm. uh, so this year we are receiving 60 million uh, the entire year from the National Treasury. So the rest, uh, 540 will have to come from the money that is being repaid in and the money that we, uh, we, we are revolving. Mm -hmm. uh, however, in, in, in some past years, we have had higher allocation and therefore have uh, also given uh, more money in, in, in a financial year. Okay. Yes. Do, does, um, so now when you get 60 million, does, has there been an year where you have money in the bank but you don't have people coming for it? Yes, yes we, we have had moments when uh, we don't uh, completely deplete the money that we, we had for, for, for the year. And what we do is just roll it over to, uh, to the next financial year. Okay, what's so, the final return now? Uh, previously a loan would take uh, even a month or two, uh, but now for group loans that don't have a lot of requirements, we are doing it in two weeks, uh, but for loans that uh, may, may require some form of security, we, uh, they may go even up to a month because at some point they'll, they require some external uh, parties, that is in terms of uh, transfer of logbooks, in terms of maybe uh, charging title deeds. So that may require an external party, which we are not in control of. So that may take a month. Uh, in some cases, a month and two weeks. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I've actually seen, you know, um, awards from around the world that really celebrate the fact that we have a youth fund. It's not something common in many countries. Uh, where you have a fund designated specifically for the youth and to help them in business. So it's a very great idea. Um, it's actually a very laudable idea. Um, the way it's been implemented in Kenya, I think it may have gone through certain rocky patches and you know trying to get up its feet. Uh, I think in the last few years uh, we've seen quite some good leadership from there trying to stabilize and even convert it into something that can fund youth a lot more. Mm. Um, I know the models I've been having is largely funding youth in groups um, and when they're in that group then they're able to keep each other accountable and maybe able to repay. It's one model that has worked very well especially like with women groups and the like in microfinance institutions. Um, I, so I think with that in mind it's probably a great fund for uh, funding basic uh, type of businesses uh, that, you know, maybe they're trading or distributing something or, you know, where they're dealing with products. Uh, but maybe there are other areas where it could be improved in terms of, uh, uh, like, you have dynamic businesses run by youth. Uh, there could be a section of the youth fund that is actually set aside for equity uh, funding, uh, where they can be like a kind of government-led equity fund that de-risks because there's, there's youth who are not able to get into groups of 15. Maybe there are two or three co-founders, they're running a tech business, they need money that's way beyond the threshold of what the youth fund is able to give. So maybe they need 10, 15, 20 million shillings type of funding. I think a different structure would be required for that kind of uh, uh, business. Um, I am aware that the, you know, there could be some legislation coming in line with that under the Kenya National Innovation Agency. But um, that, that would probably be a more appropriate structure. And then they probably need to also build a lot of other products. I don't know that they've had what it takes to be able to fund, you know, the youth are quite a huge population. So I don't know that the fund is also big enough to be able to satisfy the demand that is out there. Maybe we have to realize we are coming from the background where people generally mistrust government. So even when people see a government institution, there is mistrust because you know, in their heads, maybe they perceive that only connected people will get that money or only, uh, you know, certain type of people will, uh, who know somebody. So you have a lot of youth who don't believe in themselves enough to even just go out and try and, you know, apply or get it. Uh, others may feel like it's too complicated to have all the things that they are looking for. So. I would encourage, um, you know, the youth, uh, before you judge, you know, the youth fund, go to their, the nearest office uh, to you, uh, make an application. I think they've tried as much as possible to streamline their processes and make it as easy as possible. But the youth fund might also need to go out and partner with uh, other people who are in the space of working with SMEs. There are a lot of entrepreneurs, support organizations 
that work with entrepreneurs who are small businesses out there. And some of these people have more trust with uh, the entrepreneurs than maybe the youth fund does. So partnerships with these kinds of organizations and even, uh, you know, partnering with these organizations to be lead generators for the people who can come and borrow who are already trained and cleaned up could be something that could uh, increase the absorption of that money. I, I think if it's to be done through the group setting, uh, one of the key things to just look at is governance. Uh, first of all, are you coming together with people who share the same values as you do? and the same outlook in terms of do we have the same vision as a group uh, as we build whatever type of business this is we might be i see a lot of youth businesses doing you know waste management or you know water management or something uh, do you have a vision of what to do with that money when it comes through uh, can you build structures around who's employed in the company and who's not how you split the profits and that kind of thing and I would also say, you know, take advice from people maybe who've been down that road to make sure that you do the right things because as a business grows, when it starts out maybe it doesn't have a lot of money but as it grows a lot of challenges begin to come in. And that's where these uh, governance issues uh, become crucial. Um, but we've had a lot of people who've started in small groups like that, even a lot older people. And they went on to form circles and cooperatives and, you know, those kinds of institutions. So it's uh, learning as much as possible what it takes to run the business well so that you have the right structures and the right governance in place. Even, yeah, you could be young people, but if you're very focused and do the right things, you find that later on you even have maybe the ability to access funds from even a larger bank that can give yeah, like larger amounts of money. Mm. Yeah.